All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, we're going to be doing a seven round New York Jets mock draft. I'm pumped up and I cannot wait to see which prospects you guys have your eyes on down below in the comment section. So please let me know, especially with the 13th overall pick. I know the Jets can go in a bunch of different ways here, but I really feel like it's locked into like three, four prospects. Um, and then, by the way, quick little um, disclaimer, I guess we <laughs> And I, I can't believe we're even saying this. Like, if you were to ask me, like, two months ago, I would have said, yeah, this would have been handled by now. But Aaron Rodgers is still a member of the Green Bay Packers. We don't know exactly what the trade is going to look like. So, as of right now, the Jets have six picks in 2023. One first at 13. Two seconds at 42 and 43 back-to-back. -back, no third. One fourth at pick 112. One fifth at pick 143, and then one sixth rounder at pick 207. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right in with the first prospect here. I got to go with Paris Johnson, tackle from Ohio State at spot number 13. At 6'6", 6 6, 310, 315, Paris Johnson is a great pass protector. Okay, in fact, he's actually visiting with the New York Jets as we speak. This is a guy who's really athletic for his size. You know, he can pull well, he can get to the second level. You know, Johnson's coming from Ohio State. And we take a look at the offensive blocking scheme that Ohio State runs. Does it translate to what the New York Jets want to do on their offensive line? The answer is yes, 1000%. It requires guys to explode off the ball, move well in space, not get caught in quicksand here, and Johnson doesn't really have any of those qualities. I mean, he was a first-team All-Big Ten player for a reason. He allowed two sacks in 800 snaps. And on top of it all, this is also a player who's had success at right guard. So not only has he just played tackle and guard, two separate positions, but he's also played on two sides of the center, two sides of the offensive line, left and right. So I think from top to bottom, Paris Johnson just checks a ton of boxes. To me, he's a pretty safe player. And when I'm looking at the Jets offensive line, we have a lot of guys coming back from injury, right? Makai Becton, essentially two seasons missed back to back due to injury. Dwayne Brown is coming. Number one, Dwayne Brown is in his late 30s and he was dealing with a shoulder last season. Max Mitchell dealt with blood clots and missed a ton of time. So, you know, at, at George Fant's a free agent. Uh, yes, the, they did bring back Cedric Abwehi, but at the end of the day, Paris Johnson to me is a plug and play guy for what the Jets want to do. And if he's there with 13th overall pick, I think this is my, realistically speaking, right, my number one choice, assuming like some, you know, top three, top five prospect fall, you know, doesn't fall to the Jets at 13. But, you know, again, realistically speaking, I think Paris Johnson is the best fit. Now, you can make an argument for Broderick Jones, you can make an argument for Darnell Wright, who's you know, becoming one of my favorite players in the draft, just what he can do at right tackle. Uh, Peter Skaronsky, if he falls, there is some talk that, hey, nine to Chicago makes a ton of sense. Tennessee also makes a ton of sense. They're completely revamping their offensive line. So does Skaronsky, uh, does, does Skaronsky fall to the Jets? I'm not sure, but there's a chance. There's, you know, a definite possibility there. But I think for me at the end of the day, I'm rolling with Paris Johnson. Okay, so next up, round two, pick 42. Overall, super, super cliche here, but I gotta go with it. John Michael Schmitz, center from Minnesota. At 6'4", 320, he's arguably the best center in the draft class. There has been some debate over the position as of late, but to me, John Michael Schmitz just makes all the sense of the world for the New York Jets. Not only has it been well documented that the Jets have had a lot of interest in JMS, but we still don't have a center on the roster. Still don't have a center on the roster. That is crazy. Yes, Ben Jones is out there. Yes, Connor McGovern is out there. I think both guys make a lot of sense. But right now, I mean, if we just if we just start connecting the dots and again understanding that the Jets naturally have a lot of uh interest in him you know to begin with but then we start factoring in his great senior bowl performance we factor in his 36 career starts we look at what he was able to do in both the running game and in pass pro there was tons of production there tons of things to get excited about he's a really aggressive player as well and you know for me personally I don't think you could have enough aggression on the offensive line. Uh, one thing that's super interesting, though, uh, with Schmitz, people keep saying that this is a weakness. This is, you know, a red flag. But for me, I'm 
I got, I have a completely different mindset. I, I'm, I'm a full 180 here. It's the fact that he's 24 years old. He's going to be a 24-year-old rookie. And look, I get it if you're talking about the quarterback position or a running back or, you know, another, you know, a big skill position. But for me, when I'm looking at where the Jets are right now, we're talking about potentially acquiring Aaron Rodgers, and we're not just going to be getting him for free. We're giving draft assets away. We're taking on a lot of money. He's 39 years old. There's a very, very good chance he plays one season. So if the Jets can't land McGovern, if the Jets can't land Ben Jones, I want an old center. I want somebody who's been around the block. I want somebody who has a lot of starts under his belt, seen a lot of things. Granted, it's the college level, but still, I mean... You know, to me, that matters. I want somebody who's not going to be starstruck by Aaron Rodgers. 24 years old for John Michael Schmitz is, in my opinion, a good thing. Um, you know, I actually did a, and I've mentioned this in a couple videos here, but I did a collab with my buddy Alex, who, uh, Bosserowski Productions, he covers Green Bay, and he said a really interesting storyline with Aaron Rodgers that the Jets have got to figure out or they have to uh, have covered. If they go out and acquire a Rob, whoever is going to be playing the center position has a lot of responsibility because of how much Aaron Rodgers utilizes his cadence, trying to catch 12 guys on the field, trying to get the defense to jump off sides. He really tries to maximize the pre-snap part of the game. Um, and, you know, if you have somebody out there, let, let's, you know, for example, say a fifth round pick or maybe a backup on another team, but because he's on the Jets, he's a starter, somebody, you know, outside of McGovern and Jones in the free agency pool, that could be, the Jets could run into a lot of issues here. So, again, I, I like Schmitz as a prospect. He would come in and fit the system, has a lot of likable traits. Yes, he's older, but to me, I think that works in the Jets' favor because we would technically be a win-now team. Okay, so moving on, pick 43, so back-to-back -back picks here, and again, I completely understand that this uh, th that this pick could be dealt to Green Bay, and same could be said with the, uh, you know, pick 42 here, but I'm going defensive tackle from Wisconsin, Keanu Benton. At 6'4", 3'10", Benton's coming off a really good season with 36 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 4.5 sacks as well. He was third team all big 10 he's strong he's sturdy you don't see him getting like bodied by offensive linemen he's not getting you know just getting completely ripped apart in the strength department um by offensive linemen not in the least you know he he holds his own right he can stand there really be an anchor on the defensive line because he doesn't just get pushed around back there and he has ideal size my favorite thing about benton though is that he brings it on every single play he's a relentless attacker he's always in attack mode uh, fun to watch, really fun to watch. What else? Great combine uh, because of his uh, athleticism. Uh, you look at a potential scheme fit, right? One gap system. So yeah, he does make sense for what Sala wants to do. You can line him up next to Quinn and Williams. You're factoring in the rotation, the defensive line rotation that the Jets like to utilize. I, th I think Benton makes a lot of sense. We need more talent. We need more depth at defensive tackle here. I think we're totally fine on the edge with guys like Jermaine Johnson, Carl Lawson, Huff, uh, John Franklin Myers. And then of course, Quinnen on the inside, assuming that we sign him to the extension you know, at some point soon. I mean, we we, we really got to get that done. But Ben, big fan of him. Love the pick here in the second round. Okay, so like we talked about before, the Jets don't have a third round pick anymore because of the Elijah Moore trade. But we're moving straight to the fourth round here, pick 112. You know, I, I, I have the Jets selecting him because I, I try to switch things up. Uh, you know, from mock draft to mock draft here. And in the last one, I had the Jets going with safety from Notre Dame, Brandon Joseph, but I just love the fit so much that I, I just have to go with Joseph again here in round four. When you're talking about a high defensive IQ player, it's really, really important to have that trait when we're talking about free safety. You know, somebody who can diagnose and, and understand what the offense is trying to accomplish on every single play. Somebody who can... Uh, read and react to the quarterback's eyes. Joseph can, you know, step in and do that. He was a Northwestern transfer, right, where he was actually having a lot of success in the Big Ten. Moves over, uh, moves over to Notre Dame and had a good season. wasn't as good, you know, you know, compared with the Wildcats. But at the end of the day, when I'm thinking about a developmental safety, a third safety to slot in behind Whitehead and Clark, I think that's. I, I know Sala 
keep saying that there's a lot of faith in Ashton Davis, but for me at this point, I want somebody who's going to come in on a cheap rookie deal and we can have the understanding, all right, this guy's going to be a Jet for the next four seasons. We can take our time with development. He can, you know, essentially, I don't want to say sit on the bench for, you know, an entire year here because injuries happen and we are looking at safety. It's, uh, it's it's a position that it just you're going to need more than just two players at the position obviously so I think Joseph maybe gets a little bit of experience this rookie season but as far as like a cover three safety uh ball hawking abilities flocking sideline to sideline Joseph has all those traits I know he's not the number one safety the you know the number one ranked safety in the class but again we're in round four here. If I'm looking at position of need, scheme fit, culture fit, and somebody who I feel confident that can develop at a you know a normal rate, uh, I think Joseph's the guy. Okay, so next up, round five here, pick 143. In my last mock, I had the Jets going with Braden Daniels uh, from Utah. But this time, I think I'm going to shift gears and go with John Gaines, the second from UCLA. At 6'4", 305, Gaines is a guy who started multiple games at multiple positions. He's literally started at tackle, guard, and center. He's a redshirt senior, but I do feel like he is somewhat of a developmental project here. Again, we have to look at where we're at round five. You're not just going to go land that immediate stud like right out of the gate. Um, but I, I like Gaines as a backup guard, a backup right guard right of course avt lake and tomlinson on a huge deal behind them the jets brought in schweitzer from washington and castillo from baltimore but i would still like to have that young developing guard in the works and when i think about gains he does have a high ceiling he was a uh honorable mention for all pack 12 last season and in fact he was the number one graded guard in the class purely off uh athleticism at the combine so just say, again, a developmental prospect at maybe a position of need in one to two seasons, depending on what's going on with the backups, depending on what's going on with Lake and Tomlinson's deal. I know there was a lot of Jets fans uh, unhappy with the overall body of work last season for Lakin compared to what he's getting paid. A lot of people wanted to see a little bit more, you know, especially coming over from San Francisco, knowing the scheme, knowing the coaching staff. It didn't really work out that way. Of course, with Vera Tucker, he's an uh, absolute rock star, absolute beast. But I, I like gains here in round five. Okay, last but not least, round six, pick 207. I'm going wide receiver from West Virginia, Bryce Ford Wheaton. At six foot four, his specialty is the perimeter one on one matchups. You throw it up to him, he comes down with it, right? He has vertical speed, he has ball skills, he's a red zone threat. I think right now, and by the way, he actually led the Mountaineers in both touchdowns at seven and uh, catches at 62. When I'm looking at Wheaton with the Jets, I, I think right now it doesn't make a ton of sense, but. If you factor in that Corey Davis could be on the move, maybe Denzel Mims doesn't make the roster. There has been some, you know, unfortunate rumors that that could be uh, that could become a reality. Uh, although I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, we're going to need some wide receiver depth, and Wheaton's route running abilities isn't the strong suit of the, you know, of his game. But because he's such a big body guy and he possesses a lot of physical attributes with the speed and the size vertical jump, I think there's a lot to build around if you start stacking off-season after off-season, right? Pre-seasons, training camps, all that stuff. And overall, he can just refine his game and uh, slowly but surely get better and develop over time. We're assuming Nathaniel Hackett is here, you know, for years uh, to come. But anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I cannot wait to dive in and see, you know, where you guys stand on, who, you know, which offensive lineman, if you know you even want an offensive lineman at spot number 13, I can't wait. Let me know your thoughts, and as always, go Jets.